Hey everyone, Adam here. Uh, just a quick note before we start this episode. The lockdown audio problem curse has struck us again. Um, I promise you I did not record this episode while sitting in a bath, uh, but for some reason it sounds like I did. Hopefully it's okay. We're having these issues every week it seems and we just want to uh, apologise for them. But as soon as we can get back in the same room, the show will be back up to its normal standards. So uh, that being said, let's get on with the episode. Cheers. <laughs> Ahoy! Welcome to another episode of Bottom of the Stream. Our first December episode. I know, it's coming close to Christmas, Nick. That's excellent. We are in Advent. We are, that's true. Have you got an Advent calendar? I haven't. What? I, need to, I know, I'm not organised this year. I need to go to a supermarket and see if there's any in the discount bins or anything. I seen. I saw a post earlier on... I'm going to say Twitter because that's usually what I, I'm on more. <laughs> and a guy couldn't get to the shop. Well, no, he couldn't find any advent calendars in the shop. So he just bought a big uh, box of Ferrero Rocher and he'd post it, noted each, <laughs> the dates on each one. That's a, that's a good idea. Uh, it's a bit more expensive. But, but I think um, I think he said his, his uh, wife or girlfriend had to have uh, two on the first because it wasn't quite the right amount. <laughs> That's a good idea. But that's, that's you know, that's um, using your initiative, I guess. Yeah, definitely. I had a cheese one last year. Oh, nice. It was. It was all right. Although there were some that weren't very nice. So, And there was only like five different cheeses in it and they just I, kept repeating. Yeah, I mean, I guess that is the problem, isn't it? The odds are you're not going to like every single one. But no. hey, that's the, the lucky dip of it, isn't it? Absolutely, it was. I got that late on as well. I think I brought that on like the third or fourth. I oh, see so you had like <laughs> a week's worth of cheese to eat at the start. <laughs> Can't beat cheese. No. Mine's, How's your week been? Mine's the smartest one, I think. Oh, nice. Do you get one Smarty behind every door? No, they're, just, they're all slightly <laughs> different products, but they've all got, like, Smarties mm-hmm. in them. <laughs> oh, nice. That sounds good. So, like, some of them are just, like, a bit of chocolate with, like, mini Smarties embedded in the back. Nice. So. I do like a Smarty. Yeah, me too. What have the kids got? Uh, Barbie. Bar- Barbie uh, advent calendars. So, sounds good. Yeah. Well, this is, what is it today, the third? Yeah. So we're getting we're really close to Christmas now. How's the Christmas shopping going? I think I'm nearly done. I think I just need a couple more wow. things. Really? That's impressive. I've yeah, but I only have to buy for one person, so... <laughs> true. I, unabashedly, my wife buys for everyone else, so... That's true, I guess. That's the one good thing about having a wife. <laughs> Is that it? Is that the only thing? That's it, yeah. I can't think of any other good reason to have them, if I'm honest. Not yours, though, obviously. Yours is the best. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> just in case she listens. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm too scared of her to not. I just burnt myself a minute ago. On what? Cooking my dinner. Oh, right. On the okay. grill. I put a couple of naan breads under the grill, and yeah. when I turned them over, I caught my knuckle on the grill. Wow. Oh. It really hurts. Good bit of grilled knuckle. I know. I've got some grilled knuckle for my dinner. It's going to white. I hope it's going to be all right and not fall off. Oh, uh, yeah. If it yeah, falls yeah. off during the show, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. Yeah, you don't want your knuckle to fall off. You don't. Your finger would follow just um, well, maybe you should have a uh, an ice pack on the standby. I've got an aloe vera plant downstairs. I'll use that. Yeah, just wrap it in that. Yeah, I'll wrap it in a plant. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fine. Absolutely. Um, have you got any Netflix news? Should we do that first? Yeah. Okay. I've got yeah one news and one is just something that I noticed has appeared on Netflix today. Uh, and oh, it, nice. okay. or, or or yesterday, and I never heard of it. I'll start with that one because I'm already Go launching on. into it. <laughs> so I, I'd never heard of this program. I thought, oh, right. that's that looks really interesting. I'll mention that, and then I just hopped onto Netflix to to have a look at the trailer and stuff, and saw it's like number six in the UK top ten. Oh, <laughs> so really? Definitely not um, up with the times. But it it is a a fictional documentary oh, called. Right. Alien Worlds. Oh, that was at the top of my list when I was just looking for a minute ago. Yeah. I noticed what it was. That I didn't really so it, the logo. So it's done in like a, basically a David Attenborough style, but it's yeah. it's it's people walking around an alien world doing their documentary. Oh, really? Yeah. So, you know, we can just travel and see different worlds. See what we think they might look well, like. That's, like. That's a pretty cool idea. That is a good idea. Um, yeah. And then I saw, oh, actually, it's already on Netflix. Oh, actually, it's in the top six. <laughs> But there you go. I might check that out. That sounds quite interesting. Yeah, I think there's only like four episodes or something, but each one's focuses on a different planet. Cool. 
That sounds good. Yeah. We'll check that out and we'll report back next week then. Nice. Cool. Sounds good. I've got one bit of Netflix news. Okay. Well, it's not really news. I just found it quite interesting. Oh, you remember a long, long time ago, right back when we started doing the podcast, I think, Netflix decided they were going to follow the BBFC's rating guidelines? Yes. That project is now finished. Right, okay. So everything on Netflix is now rated to according to the BBFC's like U12, 12A. Okay, so they've finished the trawl. They've finished the trawl. And the BBFC are now asking all other streaming services to follow in Netflix footsteps. And it okay. says, and, and this, the, the thing I found interesting was it says, it's been done by an algorithm. The Netflix staff, staff watched the entire catalogue on Netflix. Okay. Whilst tagging sex scenes, depictions of violence and swear words, and then fed the data into an algorithm, which the BBFC had designed. Because normally the BBFC, there's people that have designed. Yeah, it's like a board, isn't it? And... Yeah. <laughs> but they watched 10,000 different pieces of content. Wow. And then fed all this into the algorithm. I thought it was quite interesting. But then something that even more struck my attention was there's a stat and it says BBFC research suggests 85% of parents want age ratings on streaming platforms. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And 95% of teenagers do. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't get that. <laughs> so, really? So I was really surprised when I read that. They don't want their parents to be watching something unsuitable. No, obviously not. That's <laughs> weird. But yeah, so 85% of parents and 95% of teenagers want age ratings on streaming platforms. And it's there now. The Netflix is fully compliant with the BBFC and will be audited every year, apparently. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so and they're urging other people to do it. Well, it makes well, sense. Quite interesting. I, I mean, I don't really say other other people, other streaming services can't now, if that's what. If that's what surprised there. me was that they had to watch their entire catalogue, but surely some of the catalogue is already rated. Yes. You so, would think, wouldn't you? So, Unless it's, it must have to be re-rated. Why do I have to go and re-rate Jurassic Park, for example? Yeah, exactly. yeah it's weird, isn't it? But apparently they did. Okay. So, yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, imagine that being your job. I've just got just months and months <laughs> of just watching, watching Netflix all day. And just pressing a button when someone goes to the bone zone. Or... <laughs> imagine some of the shit they have to watch. Yeah. We um, know some of the shit they have to watch. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hopefully they... they divvied it up fairly and they didn't give someone just like all the garbage if they'd have watched Arometary the same week that we did it might have got into the charts yeah maybe <laughs> have you got anything else just a quick one so just just wanted to mention uh obviously in the news yesterday it came out that um uh elliot page has oh yeah definitely. um you know conf- confirmed he now wants to be known by male pronouns going forward um and Netflix have confirmed really quickly that they are already sort of updating his name and all the credits of everything they've got with him in. Excellent. So I thought so that, was a, that was a really uh, good move from them. All, all power to him. It's absolutely brilliant that he's yeah, brave enough to come out and do that. Also a um, Botsker Award winner. Yeah, that's true. So I'll have to update our website as well. Yeah. yeah. And the Drowning in the Stream Award and the first ever Botskers. That's true. Or his portrayal of in the cured. Oh, what a movie that was! Terrible movie with a big name actor in it. Yeah, so I'll update that on the website. I've literally just thought about that. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I'd totally <laughs> forgotten about that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could. Um, I've got some stats for you. You know, how I like a stat. Oh, I love a stat. Um, you know, the Queen's Gambit. Yes, it's been doing really well on Netflix. Sure. So I spotted some stats. Somebody put them. It was actually um, Sam Asheroff. The yes. guy we interviewed, he put some stats up on Netflix, uh, on Instagram. So Sam was one of the co-directors of I'll Never Forget My High School Friends, which is yeah. a indie movie uh, uh, available on Amazon Prime. Uh, and yes. we, we interviewed those guys in the, back in the summer. Yeah, yeah, mid-lockdown, wasn't it? Yeah. But it feels like it might have been even earlier than that. <laughs> Yeah, but he I'm put some throwing a random dart and just saying summer because <laughs> I'm not sure. Where. Might have been even I don't know. It was a while back. Um, he put some stats up. He, he, I think he'd taken it from somewhere else, but uh, it was about the Queen's Gambit, so I stole it. So shout out to Sam, but I've stolen your tweet, your Instagram post. The Queen's Gambit debuted on Netflix on October the 23rd. Okay. Uh, to date, I mean, this is going back a week now, so it's probably more. To date, 62 million households have watched the show. Nice. Watched as in Netflix watched. Two minutes. I think it's, yeah, 70 seconds or something. Since that time, what percentage increase of chess set searches on eBay 
has increased? Oh, I, what percentage? I bet it is. I, I reckon it's like six hundred percent. Not quite. It's two hundred and fifty percent increase in searches for chess sets on eBay. Um, Google search queries for how to play chess have hit an all-time high. It's never been searched that much before. Okay. Um, the original novel, which I didn't realise it was a novel. Yes, it's, uh, it's a novel from the 60s as well, I think. It's 37 years old. Yeah. And as, it's now a New York Times bestseller after 37 years. So, yeah, it, it's... Because obviously the, the TV show set in the 60s as well. But yeah, uh, yeah it was a, a, a current novel upon its release. It's now, it's now become a New York Times bestseller 37 years after its release. Yeah. And the number of players on chess.com has increased by 5%, uh, five times. Oh, wow. So chess is a big thing at the minute because of the the Netflix effect, as it is known. Oh, That's yeah. what was really interesting. Really hipsters with beards and no socks yeah. playing chess just because it's cool. <laughs> I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, that is interesting. The fact that the Netflix can have that sort of um, effect on the pop culture community. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. Have you watched anything good at the top of the stream? Um, finished the American Barbecue Showdown. Oh, cool. What did you think of the finale? Amazing. It's insane, isn't it? It's like the hardest finale ever. Yeah. So, the, basically, the challenge is for the two finalists, they have to cook. Uh, they have to roast an entire pig. Yeah. For 14 hours. 14 hours. And they have to stay up overnight and do it. Yeah. It's, but, just, well, it's insane. It's not just that. They have to build Yeah, they have to build a pit. pit, yeah. Um, from scratch. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah, it was great. It's such a good show. I've really Somebody enjoyed it. Somebody at work came up to me today and told me they'd started watching it, just really coincidentally. Oh, cool. I was like, oh, yeah, you'll love that. It's brilliant. Yeah, it's it's so much fun. Yeah, it's definitely recommended. We've recommended that show a lot on the, yeah. on this show over the last month or so. Now, I've watched two films this week. Oh, yeah. I've managed to put my PlayStation down and put some films on. Okay. <laughs> um, I watched The Christmas Chronicles 2. Oh, yeah. Well, I've not done it yet. But, I was yeah, putting, my was Christmas it? Tree up, putting my Christmas tree up on Monday. I thought I'll put a Christmas film on while I'm doing it, so I thought I might as well watch that. Yeah, it was really good. It's equally as good as the first one. Excellent. Yeah, it's really good. Whoever decided to cast him as Santa is a genius. Yeah, good he job. He plays it so well. He's really well done it. He's really well made in it. Uh, yeah, really good. Really, really good fun. I enjoyed it. And I also watched a film called Dead in a Week or Your Money Back. Okay. You ever heard of that? No, never. <laughs> it's a little bit older. It's about a guy who's suicidal. But he keeps failing. He tries 10 times to kill himself and can't. it just doesn't work. He can't do it. And then he hires an assassin to kill him. And he's got a week, basically. This assassin says, oh, you'll be dead within a week, but I'm not going to tell you when I'm going to do it. And during that week, he, his life turns around. He sells, he's, a, he's an um, author and he sells one of his novels, falls in love with a girl. And then he has to try and stop this assassin trying to kill him all the time. Cool. Now, it's really good, but instantly forgettable. Okay. <laughs> I enjoyed it when I was watching it, but it's not going to shake any trees. It's just, it's just there. Fair enough. You know what I mean? It's just Fair like enough. it's quite fun, but you're not going to you're not going to remember it after a couple of days. Um, I've watched one more thing. Okay, cool. Holiday home makeover with Mister Christmas. <laughs> okay, go on. I have no this, idea what that is. It's this dude called Ben. I, yeah. I don't think his second name is really really Christmas. But ben Christmas. Let's say it is because he, he it says be. he's Mister Christmas, and he just goes and make makes over houses ahead of Christmas, and it's that like good. atrocious decorations and um, yeah, gaudy outside displays oh, really? and all this sort of stuff. Proper like so. proper like old school American. Christmas yeah, yeah, Christmas yeah. Nice. Like at one point, he spray paints a load of yoga balls to look like um ball balls. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Oh, I might have to check that out. Um, yeah, <laughs> that just reminded me as well. I saw a promo in the week for Middle Ditch and Swatch. Oh yeah, um, is that coming back? No, I think it's oh. it's. I don't know whether they're just trying to drum up sort of repeat viewings or whatever. Really and, and the whole premise of the the promo is that they have to name like their favourite five things on Netflix. Yeah, and um, Ben Schwartz is like, oh, you know, Stranger Things, all the all the top stuff. And then Middle Ditch is like, oh yeah, uh, bog gloopers, <laughs> and all this, all this really horrible random stuff. I was like, oh, it feels a bit like me and you sometimes. Yeah, definitely. 
people ask me for recommendations on Netflix all the time, and I'm just like, I don't, I don't watch the good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I only watch the bad stuff. Right. Have you got anything else? No. No, mate. I've, I'm still watching Man Down. Okay, yeah. Sticking with that. I've, I'm on series four now, so I'm nearly, I'm nearly through it, and I've actually really enjoyed it. Once I got used to what it was. Cool. I found it a lot of fun, actually. I've, start, really I've started season two of The Mandalorian. Um, okay. Yeah. I've still not finished season just, one. Just a, uh, I need to get back on it. I've only watched one, but um, yeah. Cool. Yep, I'll get back into that, but that's it. Yep. Cool. Well, we've got something else we want to do in this episode, so it's good that we've sped through that first bit. Cool. Um, this week's film is called Would You Rather? So we hit our Discord and we hit our Twitter and we asked people to send us some good Would You Rathers in so we can answer them in the show. Yeah. Well, we've had loads. We've had, we have actually had a lot more than I thought we were going to have. Um, quite a few of them we can't read out because Ross Cook especially is a deviant and needs locking up. <laughs> well, <laughs> I might choose one of them. I haven't decided you, you yet. I'm feel going free random. to choose one of them. But um, And we've got quite a lot. We're going to do an extra bonus episode for the Patreons where we, where we finish them off. We're going to do a couple in the show. Uh, do a couple right now. And then we'll finish the rest off on Patreon, yeah? Yeah. Cool. Do you want to hit me first or shall I hit you first? Uh, you go, you hit me. I knew you were going to say that. Because I've not got it up in front of me right now. <laughs> I'm going to do this. This one was, this is one of Ross's, but it's actually, it's one of his tamer ones. Um, would you rather eat a full set of teeth or drink a pint of sweat? In both cases, you get to choose the person they come from. Pint of sweat. Really? Yeah. You answered that with no hesitation. I don't like teeth. Who's the person you're taking it from? Um, does it matter? No. <laughs> it's still disgusting no matter what. Any, it's sweat, sweat, isn't it? Can I put it in the fridge for a bit? Or has it got to be like straight from the sauce? Straight from the, straight from the gland, I think. <laughs> like straight from the gusset? Yeah. Oh, I don't know if I could do that. Would teeth be like, I don't know. You couldn't crunch down on teeth though. But could you take them like a pill? Like swallow them with some milk? Yeah, but they just come out the other end. And... Oh, yeah, that's disgusting. They're both disgusting. Ross, you're <laughs> weirdo. But I don't know if I could drink a pint of somebody. It's like salty water. Eating teeth is just like a horrible thought. Yeah, not doing that. Yeah, we'll go with that one. I'll agree with you on that. <laughs> disgusting. <laughs> you're, you're um, okay, I will go with one that's coming from the Time Shifters podcast. So you can okay. find them on Twitter at T-S-P-O-E underscore pods. Um, yeah, they've actually got two pods. Yeah. There's, so it's time. On Twitter account. It's time That's shifters right. and um, orphaned entertainment. Yeah, they are. They're great guys. Really good guys. Definitely. It's a group. Yeah, we, we, we'll have to try program. and do some. But I, I really like their uh, would you rather. So Yeah, 100%. Would you rather not okay. be able to watch your favourite movie again or be able to watch it whenever okay. you wanted... But to do that, you would also have to watch the worst movie you've ever seen every week. Oh, that is a tough one. So I could either never watch my favourite movie again or watch it whenever I want, but I yeah. have to watch my least favourite movie every week. So what, what movies are you thinking? That's tough. Um, I guess The Shining okay. is probably my favourite movie overall. Although that's probably changed since I don't remember what I said last Christmas on the bottom of the burrito episode. Which is coming back this Christmas as well, we should probably mention. Yeah, I'd go with The Shining as my favourite. My least favourite could be any number of things. I don't think I could live without never seeing The Shining again. But you've got to watch Hot Butt every week. Every <laughs> single week. I think I'd have to. Tuesday I'd... Tuesday night, 8 o'clock, that's Hot Butt time. <laughs> Hot Butt's not the worst movie I've ever seen, but I get, you, <laughs> I get your point. I think I'd have to. I can't not watch The Shining or The Shawshank Redemption or something like that ever again. No, I'd do that. I would watch whenever I want, but I would watch my worst movie every week. It might grow on me eventually, you never know. What about you? I don't think I'd want my favourite movie taken away from me, so... Yeah, it, it, you have to, don't you? But I would, I would want to reserve the right to give it up, I think. <laughs> okay, next one. Um, I'm going to pick one from... Uh, I'm going to go with Grief Burritos, because we love those guys. And I've just mentioned the bottom of the burrito. Uh, at Grief Burrito on Twitter, would you rather have fingers for toes or toes for fingers? <laughs> That's a tough one, isn't I it? I think. I don't want toes for fingers. No, it'd be really weird. It'd be make things yeah, difficult. Yeah, very much so. And I don't really like my toes. So if are they going to be my toes as well? Yes. My, li- my, my little toes are useless. Like, True. <laughs> so I've, I'm going to have to have 
<laughs> Fingers for toes. I think that'd be better yeah. anyway, because you'd be like a monkey. You could climb trees and stuff. You'd be able to grip things better. Also, you could like just give weird massages. <laughs> <laughs> So if you've got fingers for toes, do you have fingers yeah, for fingers you're as just well? just double, doubling up. So you would have, like, it'd be like having four arms, so you could just... Well, no, because your, your legs aren't changing. No, but you, you could still, like, grip things better. With but none of your shoes would fit. That's true. You would never be able to wear shoes. You would, you'd have to have, like, shoe holes. And if, would, or flip-flops. Yeah, or massive shoes. Or, <laughs> just <laughs> clown, clown shoes. shoes. Just to fit your fingers. I still think it's the better option. <laughs> no, I do as well. You couldn't game with toe fingers either. No, that's true. You couldn't do anything. You couldn't type. It's got to be fingers for toes. There you go, grief burrito. Understood for you. Do you want to do another? Yeah, I'm going to choose um, one from Shark Select. Oh, which, God. <laughs> really? Which is actually, for those guys, it's pretty restrained. Okay. That's good. That's unusual for them. I love those guys. But I, Shout out to Shark Select. I really, I really like this one. Um, it was from Winstolf or from, Shark, from Shark Select. Would okay. you rather have every song... So you start to play a song, every song you start to play turns into Smash Mouth in your ears. <laughs> or every movie that you start to play turns into Shrek. Smash Mouth. <laughs> every time. I, I love Shrek as a film, but every film was Shrek? No. So, what if you... And I like that Smash I've always liked that Smash What if you song. combined two of these and every time you put your favourite <laughs> movie on... Which was Shrek. <laughs> You'd also have to watch your worst movie, <laughs> which is Shrek. <laughs> That's very true. It's my, one of my dad's favourite movies. I think he'd probably say, if you asked him. Which what, he'd take movie. the Shrek? He'd probably say Shrek. He'd probably say Shrek, yeah. I what think I'd have to say, I, was, I think I'd have to say, sorry music. I need the yeah, movies more. <laughs> Absolutely. 100% need movies more than I need music. 100%. Plus Smash Mouth also has a great song. I mean, so. yes, but... Every song, that's the only song you will now hear. So three seconds you, in to... you're walking down the aisle at your wedding or something. Yeah, everyone else hears <laughs> whatever it is. But, you're, but you hear yeah. Smash Mouth. I'd so take that, it. I'd have yeah, to if take you're it. at a party or in a club, every song is Smash Mouth. You get like two seconds of, I don't know, <laughs> Beyonce. It'll drive you then, insane eventually. Yeah. It'll drive you insane great eventually. Question. But imagine just not... It is a great question. But imagine not being able to watch a film. Or the start of every film and then all of a sudden it turns out Shrek. <laughs> Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. Definitely not. I think we've got time to do one more each. Okay. Uh, I'm going to go with this one. Uh, this is from the Inside Oz podcast. Um, at Inside Oz podcast. And uh, they've suggested, would you rather fight one Brock Lesnar sized duck or 10 duck sized Brock Lesnar's? That's a big duck. That's a massive duck. I am going to take the duck sized Brock Lesnar's. The 10 yeah. duck sized Brock Lesnar's. I mean, yeah, I 10 ducks is still quite a lot, but I think I've got yeah. more of a fighting chance. Yeah, you yeah. can just kick them. Just, I'd love to kick them. Punt a few of them them. away before they kind of get a, get their teeth into you. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, a, a Brock Lesnar sized duck is yeah. a terrifying point. <laughs> it's like, I just, um, on the Shark Select Discord, there was a, a um, Ryan put a meme up, and it was a very hench duck. And that's exactly the thing I've got in my head right now. It's not just a Brock Lesnar sized duck, but it's like as hench uh, as he is as well. As Brock Lesnar. I just like the idea of 10 little mini Brock Lesnars running around <laughs> eating bread. I just find it really funny. And I think I'd, I think I'd stand more of a chance. I'd just punt a few into the lake, but then they'd swim back. That's what I'm going for. Anyway, one more from you, and then we'll get on to talking about the actual film. Okay, my last one. I'm going back to Ross Cook. Let's finish where we started. Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> and f- for more of this goodness, check out the Patreon. Um, <laughs> would you rather heckle a stranger's funeral Yeah. or only eat cheese sandwiches for a year? That's all your meals. White bread, butter, mature cheese, nothing else. Oh, I do love a cheese sandwich, but that's a lot. You'd be so ill. You'd be so ill from it. But could you heck? Could you really go up to a funeral and start heckling? <laughs> I'm pretty sure I couldn't do it. Yeah. Do you think you'd? Uh, what you'd get there, but you wouldn't. You wouldn't go through with it. I don't think I'd be able to. Especially when you're only allowed like eight people at a funeral. <laughs> that's true, actually. That'd be that would make it a bit easier. See, oh. you have to stick that's your head over the wall or something. Too nice a person to do that. Imagine being at a funeral and somebody starts heckling. 
I just can't <laughs> even imagine it. But then I do love a cheese sandwich. And we're going to go with cheese sandwiches. So that's, that's like three meals a day all year. Just cheese. Just a is cheese any, sandwich. Is it going to kill me? I mean, I think you probably have to take a few supplements, but no, I don't think it's going to is kill there me. Any, is there any health deficiencies to this? I need to. I'll, if I'll, it's not going to kill me, then yeah, I'm taking the cheese sandwich. Fine, I'll go and heckle you. No, I'm not a stranger. <laughs> okay. Does it doesn't make it worse? Fine, I'll go. I'll, I'll, by the time it's my funeral, you never know. I'll take the funeral. Really? Yeah. I just can't imagine doing that. I couldn't even heckle a comedian, and they're expecting it. <laughs> so, I don't know. I just couldn't do it. Well, thanks for those, everybody who sent them in. The, we will do the rest of them in our Patreon episode, so if you want to check that out, head on over to the Patreon. There'll be a link in the podcast description. You ready to talk about this week's film? Sure. Okay, this week we watched a film called Would You Rather, quite coincidentally, because that's what we've just done for the last 20 minutes. Uh, Would You Rather is from 2012. It's an 18. It runs for 1 hour and 33 minutes. Currently rated at 5.7 out of 10 on IMDb. Stars a lady called Brittany Snow, who plays a character called Iris. She was in Pitch Perfect and Pitch Perfect 2 and Pitch Perfect 3. So you probably know her from that. Also stars a guy called Jeffrey Coombs, who plays a guy called Shepherd Lumbrick. Uh, Shepherd Lumbrick, which is a great name. I felt like I knew his voice. Oh, really? Yeah, would I? Does, what do I know him from? He does do a lot of um, animations. Okay. Like Marvel and DC animations. Let me get his IMDb up. He's most famous. He's in Reanimator, which is a 80s like, horror film. Have you heard of it? Yes. Yeah, I have. Yeah. Yeah, he's in that. And he's in the second one of those. Right? And he's also in The Frighteners. Uh, that'll be where I know him from. With, is Michael yeah. Douglas in it? Uh, Michael, Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox. Great movie. Really underrated. Yeah, it is a great movie. Yeah. So yeah, I, he's in that. Watch um, that a lot. That'll be it. He does do a lot of voice acting. He's in the new series of Creep Show as well. Um, he's in a lot of like the DC stuff, like DC Lego films, um, Scooby Doo and Batman films, Transformers. He does a lot of voices for that sort of thing. Hulk cartoons. Um, he's in one of the Beethoven films, the newer ones. He's in quite a lot of stuff, but he's mas- mostly famous for horror movies in the eighties. Okay. Um, also stars a guy called Johnny Coin, who plays a character called Bevins. That's a do great you, name, recognize- Johnny yeah, Coin. Johnny Coin. Do you recognise him? No, I don't think so. Should I? Um, he's in. He does quite a lot of stuff. He's probably most famous. He's in Nightcrawler. Have I've not seen never that? seen it. No, it's a really good film. Actually, yeah. you should check that out. Um, he's in one of the Tomb Raider films. He's in quite a lot of stuff, to be fair. But I thought he was really good in this. I really enjoyed him in this. Uh, he's in Preacher. Have you ever watched that? And, um, no, that is on my list to watch. Yeah, he's good in that. He's in, he does a lot of TV work. He's in the new series of Twin Peaks or the newer reboot yeah. of that. That sort of stuff. I mean, one one of the best things this movie did have going for it was this, <laughs> just its eclectic cast. Yeah, it did have a cast. That's for definite. It definitely did have a cast. It's got John Hurd in it as well. I should probably mention that. Uh, John Hurd, obviously, most famous for being the dad in Home Alone. Yeah. He's also in Sharknado, the first one. Sure. Um, it also starred an older lady whose name escapes me, but she was... Sheldon's Mima in Big Bang Theory. She, I thought I recognised her. So she, her name, um, just bear with me one second. She, I saw her a few weeks ago in Hubie Halloween. Yes, Jean uh, Squibb. That's it. Her name is, she plays she, Linda in this. So she is still working. Yeah. She's 91. That's incredible. That is incredible. I mean, obviously this film's like eight years old, but she, like you say, she's in Hubie Halloween, which came out this year. months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah, she's and still working at ninety one. She's Oscar nominated. Oh, really? And she spends most of this movie sat next to an actual porn star. <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> That's how eclectic this cast is. Yeah, it's quite a cast. Um, yes. That's uh, Sasha Gray. Yes. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, it is eclectic cast, and they're all pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I've got no issue with the cast in this film. It's uh, written, it was directed by a guy called David Guy Levy and written by a guy called Stefan, and I'm pretty sure his surname's there just to hate me. It's Schlachtenhaufen. Okay. Okay. Stefan Schlachtenhaufen. Great name. Um, he, they also together wrote and directed The Mandela Effect. Sure, I, I'm the aware Mandela of that. Effect. Yeah. 
<laughs> not that Nelson Mandela. It's the Mandela effect. <laughs> it's not political. Uh, I've not seen drama. that, but apparently it's really good. Um, and that sort of thing really interests me. So I might check that out. I know Shard Select are well into the Mandala effect. Um, and yeah, there's your cast and crew. Do you have a, a one word review? Party. <laughs> Party. <laughs> yeah, this film's a, this film's a trip. This I, I was actually really looking forward to watching this. Okay. This, this is like a piece of me, this sort of film. I love this sort of film. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely uh, right up your street. Yeah. Put, put, uh, put people in a horrible situation. Give me a bit of body horror. Were you aware of it? For it. No, not at all. Okay. I, I don't know. I think Ross claims that he added it onto the list. Um, I think I did, but he says he did. So I'm going to I'm gonna go with him. But no, it's, I'm definitely glad I've seen it. We'll get into what I actually thought of it as we go through, I guess. Sure. So where does this film start, Nick? Uh, a job interview. It does. So our heroine, maybe. I'm not <laughs> sure if that's what you call her. Um is a woman who we soon find out her name is Iris. She is played yep. by Brittany Snow, and she is having a interview of sorts. Uh, yes. It look, looks like to be a waitress. Yeah, it looks like it, doesn't it? Uh, it's not going very well, though. No. She's got no experience in being a waitress, um, and the guy doesn't seem that interested in her. Yeah, it kind of gives her a bit of a brush off. We'll let so, you know. So maybe you could be a hostess or something. Yeah. Um, then we cut from straight from that to a title card, which cuts straight into a credit sequence, which is basically the names coming up over some X-rays, bones and shit. Yeah, a bit padding, over wasn't really, it? Yeah, a little bit over some really creepy violin music. Yeah, the the soundtrack to this is very minimalistic. Yeah, it really is. Um, we cut back to Iris. It turns out that she looks after her brother, who has been injured in some sort of accident. Oh, I just, I, I just thought he had cancer. No, I'm sure she says. I've written it down, so she must say at some point that he's been in. But well, she might have been making that up, right? To the guy she was interviewing, because she was kind of giving him a bit of a sub story. Anyway, she's talking to her brother. You no, know, because he's, he's it later comes out he's waiting for a donor, isn't he, for something? Yeah, yeah, he's Although waiting it, for it a bone marrow transplant. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I presume it was cancer. But, but... So she must have just been saying that to that interv- the guy she was interviewing. Oh, to okay. Get some support. Right. And she says to her brother, "Look, I'm going to go to the doctor. I'm going to go back to the doctor because he's found a way to help us cut some of your medical bills down." Sure. So obviously this film's set in America. Um, so she does. So quite quick, this film moves at a bit of a pace at the beginning because it obviously just wants to get you into the, the meat. And, of course it does, yeah. To veg of it. Um, so she goes to this doctor's surgery and she meets the guy who's going to help her cut some costs. And there's a a rich man sitting there who is Shepard Lambrick, uh, Jeffrey Coombs' character. He's just shelling and, nuts, isn't he? Yeah, he's just sitting there all like leave, cool. Leaving the, the carcasses on the doctor's sofa. Yeah. Uh, it turns out he runs like a foundation. And apparently they believe in creating opportunities for everyday people. Yeah. And they he chooses people every year to give some money to, basically. Sure. Which is standard, I guess. I guess that sort of thing happens. So far, so noble. In the world. Yeah, exactly. Um, so he says, come to, we've got a dinner party tonight. There's going to be other people there. Um, and you, he, he does say at this point, you're basically going to compete to see which one of you is going to get the money. Yeah. Uh, we don't know how they're going to compete at this stage. Uh, but the winner of this competition will get all your medical bills paid. They've, he even says they've got a donor lined up. Um, they can jump the waiting list and that sort of thing. And Iris is like, well, this is a bit all too good to be true. So she says to the doctor, is this is this real? Um, can I believe this guy? And he basically, the doctor's like, yeah, I'm all for it. He says, I've, I've been through this. Uh, I won his game and it changed my life. Yeah, he, he says I was in a similar position. I, and, and you should do it. Yeah, so everybody's on board. It all seems pretty above board and on the on the rails at this point. She's not sure though immediately, is she? She's not. No, she said she needs, she needs to go away and think about it. Yeah. So she he gets she gives him. I can't speak, which is bad for a podcast. Yeah, it's pretty vital. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> Lambrick <laughs> says to her, "Here's my card. You've got That's a couple of hours." <laughs> Yeah, you, I need to know by eight o'clock or something like yeah. that. Yeah, it's, it's, the meal starts at eight. Um, we've got a car that will come and pick you up, but you need to let me know. Yeah. So she goes back home. She tells her. She, I think she pretty much decides straight away she's going to do it. Yeah, I mean, um, she she um she gets a phone call saying that she's not got the waitress job, and that yeah. kind of seals it, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Uh, um, so she she looks a lot of it, and she looks longingly at Lambrick's card. Yeah. She just kind of sits there and stares at it, and then she tells her brother that she's going out with some old school friends. So at this point we're like, okay, she's definitely doing it. Then. There's a quick, then, there's a quick flashback, isn't there? And yeah, and they're both in the car, and it turns out they're just coming back for some tests, and she's no 
much for the bone marrow. Yeah. Or, or as I've called it in my notes, brown marrow. Brown marrow. <laughs> nice. Um, a car comes and picks her up, and she gets taken to this massive mansion. Yeah. We've got a thing for mansions this season. Yes, yeah, creepy mansion. Yeah, another one. A few of them in this season of the show. Um, and she gets shown into a room by the uh, butler, who she meets at the door. And she meets seven other people there. So the rest of the guests are already there. She's introduced as the eighth and final guest of the evening. This is where I've written, John Hurd is one of them. <laughs> yeah, and I wrote, one of them's Crab Man from My Name is Ill. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> one I've written one lady's in a wheelchair. That was June Squibb, uh, Sheldon's Mima. If she uh, Don't care if she's Oscar nominated. That's what she'll always be remembered as. <laughs> Just one cameo episode of Big Bang Theory. Um, but two of the guys that she meets are more friendly than the others. Yep. Because they kind of introduce themselves. So is that Cal and Lucas? Yeah. Um, so yeah. Cal was the guy from My Name Is Ill. And <laughs> yeah. Lucas, um, he was familiar. He's He's been in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and has been uh, had a very small role in a couple of the Avengers movies. Oh, right. Okay. Um, I think well for himself. Yeah, he's, he's just like a S.H.I.E.L.D. suit type guy. So they kind of introduce themselves, they make her a drink and settle her in a little bit. Then we cut back, we have a brief cut back to after she left the doctor's surgery earlier on. Um, obviously, Lambert's still there with the doctor. And the doctor's quite reluctant now, now she's gone. He's like, I don't think she's the right person for this. Yeah. Uh, probably just leave her alone. Well, Lambert is like, he's, he's like, I don't care. Here's, a, here's an envelope of money. Just shut up. Yeah, here's, a, here's a load of money. I think she's perfect. Let's do it. Then we cut to Lambert and he's sitting in his office away from the rest of the guests with his son who his son is called Julian and he is the penguin from Gotham yes and I believe the first time in the history of this show where I've got a pop vinyl of him <laughs> 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 I think that's the first time that's happened so uh, yeah he's in um, he's the penguin from Gotham I don't which I think must have came after this I, Gotham's not that old is it no I don't think so no no because it only ran for like four or five seasons didn't it yeah and it, only, it must have only finished a year or two years ago. Yeah, um, I never finished it. I never finished it either. I watched like, the first two series, enjoyed yeah. it, and then I think it moved channels in this country and I never picked it back up. It, did it move channels and then start again? Oh, it I might think... have moved channels but missed a whole season. Something something strange happened that made me think, no, I'm fucking that off. Yeah. But I can't remember. And they're basically having a conversation because Julian's a bit of a head case and his dad's like, look, we, we're going to be there at the table with these people. Um, but we, we can't get involved in the game. You can't. The game is sacred. Yeah, he's basically don't touch anyone. Don't touch anyone. You can talk don't to them. Try, you can talk to them. Don't try and influence them. Definitely don't touch them. And let's just see how the night goes. Cut back to the room where they're all waiting. It's like a waiting room, I guess. <laughs> and Bevan, <laughs> Bevan's comes in and he's like, you need to leave all your personal belongings here, all your jewellery, all your watches, all your phones. Car keys in a bowl time, isn't Car it? Car key, yeah, basically. Here's a box. Put everything in. They'll all be safe. Uh, but you can't take anything in there when you go in for dinner. And so they do. They head into a dining room, which is where the majority of the rest of this film is now set. And they all sit around the table. And Lambrick and Julian make a grand entrance after everybody's seated. And we have some dinner. Dinner is served. Yep, serve some wine. Yep. Bit of now, did you catch what the dinner was? It. Because I'm going to ask you a question. It. And I'm not sure of the answer, but I think I'm right. Uh, I think it was steak, medium rare. Yeah. Bois gras. Yeah. Asparagus? Yeah, and mash. And mash. It was a ribeye steak, foragoire, for, I can't say that, <laughs> asparagus and mash, which I'm pretty sure was the same meal the guy ate in Tao. It's very close to it, yeah, now you mention <laughs> I'm pretty it. pretty sure. It was very, I've written it down, same as Tao, question mark? I'm pretty sure, it's really random, but I'm pretty sure it's exactly the same meal that he ate in that. However, Iris... I, you've remembered to, that, because it was a trivia question, wasn't it? it was, yeah, I think it was. And I think that's why I've remembered it. There's when he said foie gras, I'm sure we've definitely had that. Actually. I'm pretty sure he had it with ribeye and mash as well. It quickly comes out at this point that Iris is a vegetarian and she's neglected to tell them. Yeah, she, but so she says, she, no, it'll be fine. The potatoes are I'll fine. The, the veg is fine. Yeah, Because yeah. Lambert says, well, we haven't got anything else. Yeah, you're not having anything else. And then the game doesn't begin, but the, you get an essence of the game at this point. Sure. Lambert says to her, I, I want you to eat it. And she's like, no, I can't eat it. And she's like, and Lambert says, here's £5,000, eat it. And then instantly goes, actually, it's 10. Yeah. Eat the, eat the steak. 
And I'm like, oh, we're starting. I like it. And she does. She eats it for 10 grand. Yep. I'd eat, I'd eat a plate of tea for 10 grand. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he just bursts out laughing. He's laughing at her, basically. It's like, you've had a. She, apparently, she says she's always been a vegetarian. It's not like a fad. It's not like a new thing. She's always lived. <laughs> yeah, she's like 20 something years she's, in she's or like, something. Yeah. And he's like, you've sold yourself out for 10 grand in a couple of seconds. Your, your whole life's values. And he's basically mocking her for it. Yeah. But he gives her the money. Oh, yeah. He hands yeah. the money over yeah. straight away. That's not an issue. Um, and then it's revealed that John Hurd, I didn't catch his name. No. Conway? I just, I just called him Home called, Alone. <laughs> I think Sorry. he was called Conway. He doesn't drink. So I'm like, well, we obviously we know where this is going now. He hasn't um, touched a drop for 16 years. Yes, he's a recovering alcoholic. Lambert makes him an offer. And he's like, I'll give you 10 grand if you drink that glass of wine. Or here's a picture of... It's a, no, it's a, a full decanter of scotch. Decanter, that's the word I'm looking for. A decanter of scotch, and I'll give you 50 grand if you drink the whole thing. Conway's pretty adamant that he's not going to do it yep. until the 50 grand hits the table. Yeah, then he's straight in there. And then he straight next it straight from the decanter. It doesn't even use a glass. I think it's Cal says, oh, is this the game? Is this the sort of thing you're just going to mock us all night? And Lambert's like, no, the game hasn't started yet. But then he gives him the rules, and he's like, right, the game that we're going to play is a simple game of would you rather... We're going to play it over a series of rounds. Each round you will get given a choice. But in this game, whatever you choose, you must do. So if we'd have done that a minute ago, yeah, you'd have been drinking somebody's sweat by now. Yeah. Um, you have to do it. Um, he's he, done. he says it's timed, so you'll get a certain amount of time to make your decision, and your decision yeah. is has to be final. Yeah. Um, players will be eliminated as they go, and a refusal to participate is classed as an elimination. Yeah. Um, in round one, you have 15 seconds to choose. It gives them all a chance to leave at this point. Anyone who wants to yeah, leave. Yeah, he says that if you, you want go. to go, you're more than welcome to go. And he also, somebody says to him, why don't you just help us all? You've obviously got the money. Why can't you just help them all, help everybody? And he's like, I can't help everyone. You have to kind of prove yourself, prove that you're worthy of my money. Because yeah. he's, he's a bit of a psycho, <laughs> let's be honest. Um, he offers them, like you say, offers them the chance to leave. And nobody does. But then Conway considers it a little bit. He gets up. It's because... Bevins has, it's because Bevins has wheeled in this trolley yes. of like electrical it's equipment. Two, it's got two car batteries on it, that's how he describes it. Yeah, uh, and, and that's the point in which Home Alone is like, yeah, actually, I'd like to go. <laughs> yeah, but he's like, no, you had your chance, yeah. you can't go. You're in now, you're locked in. You're in. <laughs> then the trolley gets reeled in and, I'm, and I've written, here we go. And it's just like dropped in conversation by Lambrick. I think. Oh, by the way, Bevins... Butler, he used to be a uh, interrogator for MI5. That made me yeah. laugh. <laughs> <It's just laughs> way it was delivered. And as soon as that that little fact is revealed, Conway's like, "Nah, fuck this, I'm out of here, I'm going." So he gets up, and Lambert's like, "You're not going. The, you nobody left when I gave you the opportunity to go. The game has begun. You're in this now." And Conway's like, "No, I'm going. I'm going." John Hurt's like, "I'm heading out the door." So Bevan just fucking shoots him. Yeah. Literally kills him dead, straight from the off. Everybody screams. Everybody's going a bit crazy. They kind of all know now what they've let themselves in for. Sure. And there's a lot of regret around the table, I believe. Uh, yeah, so we've lost one already. There's a lot of, lot of blubbering already. Yeah, John Hurd's already dead. That feels a horrible thing to say when he actually... <laughs> and yeah, so we're down to seven already from eight. But the game's not even started. So the first question comes, and it's aimed at Cal who is the guy from My Name Is Ill. He is asked, would you rather electrocute yourself or Amy? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's the concept is now for this round. So um, two people, yeah. it's the pe- person sitting next to you, basically. basically they yeah. both have a headband with yeah. um, electrical um, connections uh, yeah. on it attached to them. And the simple question is, you have a button, two buttons, you can either electrocute yourself or the person sitting next to you. Yeah, so Cal has to choose himself or Amy. He electrocutes himself. Yeah. And he does a wobble and it goes a bit crazy. <laughs> it's he looks... a <laughs> his, hair, his hair smoulders a bit. It does a this, little bit. Yeah. This is a big electrical charge that I get it here. Yeah, it, it knocks him out for a little while. Because Bevins has got this thing about bringing people back around by just rubbing their face. Yeah. It's really creepy. It does it a lot. Amy, who has survived that one, is then obviously past the button and it's her turn to choose. So I think Amy's the only one we've not really mentioned. So she's yes. a kind of a bit of an emo, isn't she? Yeah. So this is the character that Sasha Gray plays. Yeah. And she's a bit of a bitch as well. She's she's there to play the game. She just, 
since she wasn't there to make any friends, let's put it that way. Yeah. Linda is given the other head strap, who is the older lady in the wheelchair. And Amy presses the button for Linda before he's even finished asking the question. Yeah. She doesn't even need the 15 seconds. Amy's Amy's ruthless. Um, obviously, Linda's an older lady. It knocks her out. So she gets brought around again. Then she has to choose. Um, she electrocutes Peter, who I think is he the guy who was sitting next to her on the other side. He's a bigger guy. Uh, no, he was next to her. He's like the guy with the stubble. and Yeah, yeah. Peter. I'm sure he yeah. was called Peter. Yeah, I think he was. Um, then we cut back. It cuts away for a little brief moment um, to the doctor from earlier. Yeah. Uh, he's in his house and he's going to a drawer and he's found a gun. He's got a gun. So that's just a little brief scene and we're back. then we're straight back in the room. And everybody's just going around electrocuting the person next to them. Iris, I think, picked herself. I so, didn't write down what everybody picked. because No, so it, it break, the chain kind of breaks because Lucas, who's the guy sitting next to Iris, he shocks himself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then Iris picks herself definitely. I- Iris picks herself instead of Cal because it's done the full circle it's, and he's, yeah, already he's already been, been done. done. So yeah, yeah. There's there's a little bit of working together as it comes back to our heroes, I guess. Yeah, they they they're kind of bonding, aren't they? Um, once the round's finished, Lumbrick says to him, "Look, I'll give you a minute. You've got a moment to prepare for round two. I cut back to the doctor. He's now driving with his gun. Yeah, uh, with their little like tiny scenes of the just, yeah. We know he's coming." I'm um, not sure I need as many cutaways, but there you go. <laughs> they have Lambrick and Julian leave the room and they have a bit of a chat about how they're going to escape. Uh, Julian comes back in and he starts mocking them all. Yes. Because he's a bit of a dick as well. And Travis stands up. And yeah. Travis and is one of the other guys that we've not mentioned much of. Yeah, he's an ex military guy, isn't he? Yeah, he doesn't look uh, like one, though. No, <laughs> and he, he basically says, you know, what have you ever done to Julian? You're in, entitled so and so. Correct. Yeah, he basically uh, stands up to him and. And Julian says, you've made a big mistake. Yeah, what did you do that for? <laughs> yeah. You're an idiot. Uh, um, and in the background, as this is happening, uh, the the butler and his staff are basically laying out a kill room. Yeah, they're basically covering Dexter the horror in plastic. They're Dexter in it. Cut to the doctor again. He now arrives where he's going. Yeah, he like scales the wall, doesn't he? Yeah. And we're in round two. So Lambert comes back in. He's like, right, for this round, you've got 30 seconds to decide. And we're starting with Iris this time. So the question is, Iris, would you rather stab Cal in the thigh with an ice pick or hit Travis with some sort of whipping staff three times? Yeah. Travis is like, you can't, the thigh's a really dangerous place to stab somebody. He's like, whip me three times, I can take that, that's not an issue. Bevan's kind of shows, she agrees to do that. Bevan shows her how to do it. Because these, Labrick's like, you can't just hit him a little bit, you need to proper go for it. Yeah, yeah, you got to put your full effort in. And she does, and his back is fucking ripped to pieces Yeah. at the end of it. That stick was, I don't know what it was made of, but it was a nasty piece of work. Lucas then gets given the exact same question, and the question is aimed again at Travis. Yeah. So it's stab, who was Iris. Stab Iris in the thigh, or give Travis three more hits. And I'm like, ooh, Travis should not have stood up to Julian. So And he's, Travis is like, I can take it, go on. Yeah, I can take three more, it fucking hurts, but I can take three more. Um, and he does. He gets so he's now been whipped six times across the back, um, and his back is fucked up. There's blood coming pouring through his shirt. I've written here, and I'm really proud of this because I feel like I know films because I got this right. I've written here. Cut back to the doctor. I feel like he's going to howl around this. <laughs> 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 but you know, you'll get that if you know what The Shining is. I've literally written Good that. Call. I feel like he's going to howl around it. Um, it's then Peter's turn. Peter is the lady, sit- the person, the man sitting next to Linda. Linda's in a wheelchair. So Peter's feeling is Linda won't even feel this if I stab her in the thigh because she's paralysed. So I'm going to do that. Sure. And he does. And he hits the archery and she starts pissing blood everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> then it's Linda's turn. Linda obviously is still pissing blood everywhere. So she very quickly stabs Amy in the leg. Yeah. Uh, and then, Amy punches uh, her in the face. It's just L back fists. I back fists to Linda straight in the face. Hey, Linda's, like we said earlier, in well, 80s at this point. Lin- Amy's then given the question, but the question slightly changes. Because it's you can whip Travis or you can stab anyone. So she picks up the ice pick and stabs Iris right in the lung, in the yeah, side. In the side. Basically. Yeah. I'm gonna have to fly through this because it does. There's a lot going on in this film. That's fine. It's fine. We're almost at an hour already. Travis at this point falls off his chair, which made me laugh, and it probably shouldn't have done because <laughs> he's just pouring blood out, and he's just, and all of a sudden he just hits the chair. Um, Doctor breaks into the basement. He's obviously coming to save the day. Um, cut back. Unfortunately, Linda's now dead. Yeah, she's gone. 
She's uh, she's she's bled out from this leg wound. They wheel her away. They wheel her away. The Bevans goes over to check on Travis because he's lying on the floor. He isn't dead as yet. No. Um, but he's not far away. He's, he's struggling. Away. And now it's Cal's turn. And Cal gets exactly the same question. You can whip Travis three more times, basically finish off Travis, or you can stab Lucas wherever you want. And he's like, I, he says to he says to Lucas, if I stab you in the leg, I could kill you. Like he's just killed Linda. Travis is already pretty much dead anyway. I didn't Travis. like this. I I didn't <laughs> think this decision made sense. And I agree. It was, he decides he, to finish off Travis basically. And he'd it was too sudden a character shift because he'd been like a nice guy up to this point. All the way point, yeah. And and yeah. like he'd been basically he's been electrocuted once and he's gone to pieces. <laughs> I I, like I just it. didn't I didn't buy this bit. No, I agree with you. I, I would have definitely... Lucas was a strong man. He could have taken that fire stabbing. Travis doesn't die, really, um, amazingly, but Bevan says, look, he's too far gone. He's not going to be able to finish <laughs> yeah, the game. He's out for the count, yeah. He's out, yeah. Let's, <laughs> uh, so they remove him from the game. Basically, he's eliminated. It's ref stoppage for Travis. So they're down to five. Um, obviously, it's the break between rounds again, and they decide they're going to have a go at running. Yeah, they just... Try and overpower him. So there's a, there's a proper ruckus goes on now everybody's kind of beating each other and you kind of lose track of what's happening and who's got away and who hasn't Carl gets hold of like the whipping stick so he get he managed to get a couple of blows in on on the guards um, yeah and then he, he heads to Lambert doesn't he yeah and it looks like he's going to get some in on him but then Lambert just shoots him yeah which stops everything as soon as that gun goes off everybody stops they all get sat back down at the table well Iris has managed to get except, out yeah I was going to say I except think... Iris isn't there she's managed to get out of she... the room she had the ice pick, so she she's put that in the shoulder of a guard, and she's yeah. she's managed to escape. So she's missing in the house now. So Bevan for long. goes. Bevan goes after her. And Julian's like, I'm going to go after her as well. Um, there's a bit of a chase scene. There's nothing too exciting, and then eventually Julian catches her. Yeah. Um, and he tries to rape her. Yeah, it's just a bit. He's a creepy, horrible weirdo. Yes. But, yeah. But he's also quite slight, and even though she's been stabbed in her lung. She manages to beat the crap out of him. <laughs> Just as she beats the crap out of him, the doctor shows up and he's going to save the day. Yay. But unfortunately, instantly gets shot because he does fucking hell around it. And I'm so proud <laughs> that I called that. <laughs> that like, is good was, work. It was obvious that it was going to happen. He get he literally gets there. As soon as he's like, Iris, I've come to say... And he doesn't even get to finish his sentence and Bevan shoots him in the face. And we're done. The, the, we, that's it. You don't see the doctor again. You don't even know what happened to him. So it's been a bit of a, a red herring all the way through. Bevan takes her back to the game. Bevan's pulls Lambrick aside and he ba- you can hear him whispering, but he says well, he's tried to rape her. And Lambrick storms out of the room. Sure. And so he's going to obviously go and deal with you. Ju- Do we see Julian again? No, think? no. Lambrick comes back and basically says, "You won't." I'm very. I apologise for my son's behaviour. We won't be yeah. seeing him again. And that's yeah. it. And we don't ever see him again. We don't know what he's done. Um, and then he says, "Back to the game." And somebody wheels in a big barrel full of water. Sure. And I'm like, oh dear. It's going to be fun. And they all get given an envelope as well. And so this time, the choice is better the devil you know, basically. So sure. he says, Lambrick says, the barrel is we will hold you underwater for two minutes. Or you can choose the mystery envelope. Right. And I didn't like this round as much. No, I didn't either. Because he lied. Yeah, he did. And you're I, right, I it isn't a would you well. rather. Because he, he says to them, if, I'm putting the envelopes down at random. Fine. Yeah. No problem with that. But he specifically says the whole the whole gamble you're taking is that some of the things in that those envelopes are fine, they're yeah. they're minor, and some of them are pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> yeah, but he is lying because they're all pretty bad. Because they're all horrible. So he, he he goes from Jigsaw to Mark Hoffman at this point. Yeah, because he hasn't <laughs> lied. No, at all. No, at any the point. Been fair up until now. Well, not fair, but he's but, no, but it's, the rules. He's not he's playing by the rules. Yeah. yeah. But it's like it's actually the same as Saw, and uh, the the guy who takes takes over from Jigsaw just you can't win his games. Yeah, Peter decides he's going to reverse psychology. He's a gambler. So... This made me laugh as well, and I don't think it meant to. He literally <laughs> talks through what he's doing, doesn't? He? Yeah, and eventually you, you want me to choose the water, so I'm going to choose the envelope. Basically, and he does choose the envelope. Um, and inside the envelope is a card, and it's just got a picture of a firecracker on it. Yep. So Lambert says, oh, that's not too bad. You've just got a lighter firecracker in your hand. And Peter's like, oh, I can do that. No problem. Except what he's given is basically a stick of dynamite. Yeah, it's like a mini stick of dynamite. I think he sort of calls it a quarter stick. Yeah. And he's like, I can't set this up in my hand. What the fuck are you talking about? 
and he ends up having it taped to his hand. Sure. And then he lights it, and then it blows his hand off. Yeah. <laughs> As it obviously will. They make him step away from the table, so they know it's going to happen. It blows his hands off. He hits the deck quite hard. This bit was definitely played for laughs. Yeah, it was. It was. And it didn't... Did it make you laugh? Because it's... Bevin's made me laugh. Yeah. Go on. What did he do? So he goes over to him. Yeah. And and Peter's on the floor, and Bevin's just goes... I think he's having a heart attack. (laughs) Now he's dead. (laughs) That's exactly what happened. So we're down to three. It wasn't funny. There's not a lot about this film that is funny, and I'll get to that at the end. We've got three left, basically. We're down to Lucas, Iris, and Amy. Yeah. Uh, Lucas picks the envelope again. He he doesn't think he can hold his breath for two minutes. In the envelope is a picture of an eye. And Lambrook says, oh, this one's not too bad. All you've got to do is uh, slit it open with a razor blade. Sure. Of course. (laughs) Fuck that. And it's basically um, Lucas's reaction. He's like, fuck that. I can't do that. What are you talking about? I would, I with him, I couldn't do it. I physically, I'd, I wouldn't be able to do it, I don't think. No, I think you're right. I don't think I would. But I definitely couldn't hold my breath for two minutes. So what do you do? Yeah, I, 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 don't, I, I don't think I could physically lift that to my eye. No. I would, you rather get, would you rather just... Because he's going to get shot if he doesn't do it. Yeah, I think I would. <laughs> So the basic, we have not mentioned um, Lambrick's got a timer the whole time. He's timing everything. So he says, I'll give you 30 seconds. You've got 30 seconds. Well, they're going to, well, he says they're going to eliminate you, but they're basically going to shoot. And once you've made your choice, your choice is final. So yeah, there's no like, oh, actually, I'd rather have the barrel. Water. No. Yeah. So the clock starts ticking down. He's like, gets close to his eye and then screams and squares and screams. And it's really quite tense. Eventually he does do it, but it's off camera. Yeah. He'd, I, I was really expecting them to, graphically show that yeah there was because no like squelch or anything was there was there? nothing he was just a scream you can there was just a scream you see him raise the blade to his eye and then there's just a scream and yeah. you don't even see the aftermath because he instantly covers it with his hands yeah so they don't even really bother i think i think it's it's a bit swollen and shook but they don't even really bother doing any makeup no, on it do they no they don't because um, it's basically that scene is the poster for this film yeah i was expecting it to be a lot more to that scene. There was nothing to it, was there? No. Um, not that we probably should want it, but if you're going to do a body horror film, you might as well do a body horror film. <laughs> then it's Iris' turn, and she's like, I'm going barrel. Yeah. <laughs> Straight in. She doesn't even want to open her envelope. So, <laughs> Lambert gets brought a brew at this point, because he's going to sit for two minutes now. Bevins holds her head under the water. Yeah. And... Whilst she's under there, she's all she goes, calm. And she serene. goes all, all like zen, doesn't she? Yeah, she has a bit of a dream of her brother. And he's sitting in a car and he's talking about when he had a dream about her drowning. Yeah. And then eventually she struggles. And she struggles quite a lot. And eventually the two minutes is up and she comes out and she's alive. She survived it. Uh, she wasn't under there for two minutes, by the way. She was under there for one minute and 16 seconds. What? <laughs> Bullshit. I didn't time that. That's one of IMDb's trivia points. She opens her envelope. Well, one of them opens her envelope at that point to see what yeah, she could have got. Just to see, yeah. And her, on her card was to have all of her teeth extracted. Yeah. Which is long term quite bad. That's Yeah, that's uh, nasty. <laughs> nasty. Then it's Amy's turn. It's revealed at this point by Lambrick somehow that Amy's husband drowned her daughter. This was very clumsily just dropped <laughs> in the script. <laughs> it just came out of nowhere, yeah. We've not had any backstory of any other character. No. We don't know anything about any of them other than Iris. Um, but yeah, that's just really clumsily locked in. So she decides to pick the envelope. She makes a big mistake there because in the envelope is a picture of a barrel with a four Which, next to it. Also, again, I think he's breaking his own rules here because at the start he gave that whole instruction to his son saying, don't influence them, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. don't lead them. Yeah, he's basically just got... He, he, he says, oh... Amy, I suppose you won't want to take the barrel because of what happened with your son, uh, with yeah. your husband and your daughter. I was like, if that's not leading the witness to the envelope, what is? <laughs> Absolutely. And it turns out that her envelope says that she's got to go in the barrel anyway, but for four minutes and not two minutes. And Lucas is like, that's not even possible what you're talking about. And he's like, it is possible. People that's can no... hold their breath for longer than four minutes. Yeah. Nowhere near the world record. He, <laughs> he does. But Amy, though, can't because she doesn't even make 20 seconds. Which, again, isn't really fair, because that's like someone saying to me, you can survive, but you've got to run 100 metres faster than Usain, Usain Bolt. Bolt. Yeah, basically. It's possible. It's not going to happen. Lambert wanted Amy dead at this point, because yeah. 
he doesn't even give a chance to take a breath. He's, Bevins grabs her head so quick and just pushes it straight under. And Iris is like, she didn't even get a chance to breathe. Yeah, so the game's up totally off the yeah, definitely. rails yeah, at this so it's point. Not, it's not fair at this point. And she dies pretty much straight away. She starts struggling as soon as her head hits the water. And she's dead. She's done. She's drowned. She's gone. Which leaves us with two, Iris and Lucas. And he said, Lambert comes, sits down. He's like, right, we're at the final round. This is it. This is make or break. All or nothing. Usually this doesn't even get past the first question. Um, so if you, if you get the first question, you've got a massive advantage. So we're going to flip a coin to see who goes first, which he yep. does. Uh, Iris wins the coin toss. And the question comes to Iris. Would you rather end the game now with nothing? Both people live, but you walk out of here with no money. Sure. Or take this gun and shoot Lucas in the chest. And I've written, it's gone all golden balls. <laughs> <laughs> because that's the same thing they have to deal with. You know, like If she chooses to leave the game now then Lucas would have surely been given the same question. Yeah. And he could have shot her and gone with all the money. So it's, it's exactly. the same as just the carrots, golden balls. Lucas basically starts begging for his life. He's like, look, we'll just get out of here. This, the game's over. We, we're done. We've survived. Let's go. And then he starts to tell his story. Yeah. Like, well, who, why he's there. Yeah. He doesn't get very far because she picks up the gun and shoots him in the chest. Yeah. Straight away. And they everybody starts clapping. All the staff start clapping and it's really uncomfortable. Because she's crying her eyes out and like screaming that she's what she's just done. And everybody's really happy that she's done it. Yeah, she's and, literally getting a round of applause. Yeah, literally. Everybody's like, she gets a standing ovation for doing it. But she's won. So she gets a bag full of cash. Um, Lambrick says the donor's been arranged. The, there's somebody in Romania, I think, who's going to donate the bone marrow. Yep. Um, here's your big bag full of money. And here's a car to take you home. So she goes home. It's all over. Um, she gets home, she has a shower because she's still got this hole in her chest, remember. Um, she sorts herself out, goes in to check on her brother. And unfortunately, her brother's taken an overdose and has died. Yeah, the this end. Weekend. <laughs> the end of the film. So that was a bit of a down note to end on. But what did you think overall? I'm going to come back to that ending in a minute. I Parts of it, I it went really quick. Yeah. Like, I, I quite enjoyed it whilst I was watching it. Yeah. Uh, but there's parts of it I really didn't like, like right. the the ones I've I've pulled out basically. I it annoys me that it's not stuck to its own rules. Yes, because it's just a bit too lazy to do this movie properly. <laughs> That's it's kind been, of what I felt. Exactly. My I've written down here is a movie of missed opportunity because there's so many good things you can do with that sort of premise. I just didn't like. I li- I liked the film overall. I I think it's been done better, and I think it's easy to do it better. You can make that film better quite easily, which we'll come to when we get to the turning the tide section. I I saw it more as a not that much of a funny comedy as opposed to a poor horror film. Yeah, I, but it's not very. It's not a lot of fun. It's, it no, is, it is quite uncomfortable at points. But they were definitely going for the sort of black comedy vibe. That, yeah, that, I which, I had it more of as a as a black comedy than a. A horror. I thought I was getting a, a, a horror torture porn Eli Roth, early exactly. Eli Roth type thing. Exactly, so did I. And that's I think not what this is. You've got to go one way or the other. You've got to go full on body horror torture porn or you've got to go full on black comedy. And this one kind of teetered over in the middle. Yeah. It didn't know which one it wanted to be and it ended up taking itself too seriously. Even though, you, like you say... It's but not a, all the time because then you just no. got an outright comedy Gigafest. line. Yeah. So... The, and it didn't quite mesh together, I, which which sounds like I didn't like it, but I didn't not like it. I just didn't, yeah, it didn't have me all the way. I agree. It it it's good for what it is, but it, it's been done better, and it isn't that difficult to make this film better. But I really like the cast. The I, I, cast are brilliant. It, it's really di- cast are it's really diverse. It. It's it is, and, and they're all they're all good, and they're all game for it, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> but. I could have done without the ending. I didn't need that last little twist. I could, I could, it, I could not agree more. Just rubs it in. I didn't need to... She's just been been through all that. Why do we need to kick her when it's, she's down? It's stupid. It's, I've written literally my very first note after I've written the end is I'd definitely get rid of that. It's stupid and predictable. It's unnecessary. It didn't need to happen. Yeah. I Even before she got home, I was like, her brother's going to be dead. Yeah. And it's like... I knew it was going to do it. Most horror films will give you a happy ending because of what you've sat through. You don't need a happy. You don't need a bad ending on a horror film. I don't know. It just didn't work. It did that didn't sit right with me at all. It didn't need to happen. It was unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. 
So yeah, mixed. Very mixed. Mixed, on, mixed, on yeah. Um, shall we talk stream table? Sure. Do you want me to run through the whole stream table? Yes, please. Uh, currently at the bottom of the stream is Malevolent. That's at number nine. Uh, Life Force is at number eight. Eye Boy is at number seven. Uh, Results is at number six. Results is plummeting down the table, which I'm enjoying. Um, Hungerford is at number five. The Discovery is at number four currently. Catfight is at number three. The Lost Bullet, which was your wildcard pick from last week, is at number two. And Calibre is still holding its place at number one, which is Sam's wildcard. What are you thinking on this one? Uh, I think, for me, the debate is which side of the Discovery does this one fall? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, higher than I am. My, my debate was which side of results does it fall. Oh, okay. So that puts us around Hungerford. Do you think it's a better film than Hungerford? I think I enjoyed it more, yeah. Interesting. That is interesting. Okay, I can I can get on board with that. I'm really surprised because I, I thought you'd be a lot, uh, I thought I, I this would be the other way around. I enjoyed it, but I think I could I think I could have done it better. <laughs> that sounds really egotistical. But so I I, I, I it's a, missed, a lot of missed opportunity in there. I agree completely but with what I you're saying. Done it better. No, <laughs> <laughs> I agree completely with what you're saying. I I think there is a lot of missed opportunity, but but I it was still breezy and yeah no yeah it was it was yeah. good. It, it was fine. <laughs> Did you? I will therefore put it below the discovery and above Hungerford. So what would that be? Fifth. Okay. You happy with that? So yeah. It'd be discovery. I just think it wasn't, and then Hungerford. That's fine. It it wasn't as it wasn't as funny as it needed to be as a comedy, and it wasn't horrific enough as it needed to be to be a horror. Yeah, agreed. If we were turning a tide on it, we are. That's coming up now. <laughs> So we'll put it below the discovery and above Hungerford, yeah? Okay, yeah. Excellent. How would you turn the tide on it, Nick? I'm going full in. Let's chop some limbs off. Full in. Let's I agree. Let's have some gushers, you know. I've actually got a few. Pull some teeth out. Well. Just go for it. That's one of I've written that. That's one of my suggestions. If you're gonna go body horror, go full on body horror, because there's not hardly anything in this. There's no blood in it. That you see Travis's back, but only for his shirt. You see a bit a bit, a bit of blood piss through Linda's trousers. Yeah. And that's about it. You don't even see him slit his eyes. Never even any blood coming out of his eyes. Just swelled up at the end. Sure. You see Amy drown, which is quite graphic. If you go in body horror... The, the worst bit of her drowning... The worst bit of her drowning, sorry to speak across you, is, is just... It's the squeak of her trainers on the... Yeah. <laughs> on slipping the, on the plastic. Plastic. Agreed. If you're going to make a body horror film, then make a body horror film. Do it properly. Go, don't go full on hostile because that's like the other end of the scale. But there's, you could have done this a lot better. I also, I've got two more. Okay, <laughs> like, cool. Like I said, I think I could do this better. I think you should vary the questions. Okay. The fact that there was only three questions in there annoyed me a little bit because everybody got asked the same thing every in every round. I think I... I'd have been asked. I think I'd have asked different questions to them. Right. Does that make sense? I, in the first round, were they all had to electrocute each other? But I, I quite like, oh, I like this. Now. This sick. <laughs> Tuitousness of that. If that was even a word. It is now. I see. I didn't. I put me off. I was like, if you're going to have fun with a body horror film, then get as many questions in there as you can. As an opening round, I thought it was fine. You know, the whole pass it on to the next person, and then I quite liked up how I liked how it was linked, and you know, the the psychological bit. I suppose of would what happened to the last person influence your decision, and yeah, but it. It didn't have the guts to carry it through, and it just descended, didn't it? Into just yeah, it, was, it was too formulaic. Stupid game. Um, I've also got a recasting suggestion. Okay. Um, Shepard Lambrick yeah. needed to be. I couldn't take lot, him seriously. No, in, but I think it needed to be a lot more weird, and a lot more like he was too normal. Yeah. And he needed to be a lot more disconcerting. I want to recast him with Walton Goggins. Oh, nice. <laughs> All the way through, I was thinking this would be a great thing for him to do. Yeah. He'd be brilliant at that because he's got that maniacal edge to him. And you just think, yeah, you're a psychopath. I didn't get that with this guy. I didn't feel at any point, yeah, you're a psychopath. He wasn't creepy. He wasn't creepy and he wasn't, he wasn't psychotic. He wasn't really weird. No. And Can you imagine? But I didn't... Walter Goggins but... sitting there with that cup of tea while yeah. Amy's drowning. Oh, but it's I, been I, amazing. I, the problem is I didn't find it creepy that he wasn't creepy. I... <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Maybe they were going for the fact that he was relatively normal. Yeah. 
but that but you could freak you out, but it didn't yeah, work for me. It didn't work. You need because he he just came across as normal. Whereas you want you need somebody who's a psycho playing normal. Yeah, and I think Walton Goggins would be amazing at that. And it just all the way through, I couldn't get him out of my head. Like, yeah, someone who's sort of coming apart at the seams a bit. Yeah, yeah. No, that's cool. That's good. Good thinking. Thank you. Do you want to pick next week's film? Yes. Right. What are you looking for? Uh, what haven't we had for a while? Um, I, I really enjoyed doing something a bit less serious this week. Sure. So it's something that's a bit more you didn't have to like concentrate on so much. So we've got quite like something else like that. Okay. Oh uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm up for that. Just I I'm I've not got a genre in mind particularly. So something a bit silly and a bit that you can just enjoy. Yeah. Right. right I'm going to press the button. Ready? Do it. Yeah, I've picked a film called Shimmer Lake. Cool. Do you have any ideas what Shimmer Lake is? No, whatsoever. Interesting. Right, I'll look it up on IMDb. Have you any idea what you think it is? Um, What's it give you the impression of? Frat party (laughs) at a lake. (laughs) Um, I I think maybe horror again. It's not. Okay. It's a crime drama mystery thriller. Oh, I love a crime drama mystery thriller. (laughs) Oh my goodness. Uh, The synopsis says, an inventive crime thriller told backwards. Oh, lovely. (laughs) Great. <laughs> Mem- memento um, me up. Reversing day by day for a week following a local sheriff's quest to unlock the mysteries of three small town criminals and a bank heist gone wrong. Let's do it. I'm up for the challenge. The tagline is right place, wrong crime. Oh. It's Netflix original. It's got Rain Wilson in it. Oh, ace. We've been talking about him a little bit just lately because he narrated that other thing, didn't he? We are the champions. He we did, are the yeah. champions, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so uh, we'll watch that, shall we? Let's do it. Cool. And in the meantime, check us out on Twitter and Instagram at BOTS underscore podcast on both of them. Uh, Facebook.com slash bottom of the stream. Check out our brand new website. It's com, where you'll find every episode we've ever recorded, every stream table we've ever done. Uh, you can find the Botskas results, any Oscar winners. There's some merch on there. It's nearly Christmas. I'm not sure if you get it in time now, but get some merch from there. Um, and you can also check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash bottom of the stream. Uh, for a couple of quid every month, you'll get some early access to the episodes, free, uh, free. I don't know what I'm talking about, <laughs> early access to the episodes, uh, some free bonus episodes, that's where I was going, and uh, Nick writes a newsletter occasionally, well, once a month, and you get a wild card if you come in at a certain level, and there's one last thing, check us out on Discord, the community over there is still growing, uh, it's really good, we have a lot of fun in there, the link to the Discord will be at the very bottom of the show notes in the podcast description in your podcast app. Yeah, if you can't do that, then please spend a couple of minutes to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, on Podchaser, on Podbean, or anywhere else that you can review podcasts. Maybe over Christmas, uh, if you're playing any sort of party games, uh, then you can bring in a barrel of water and (laughs) say to people, would you rather spend two minutes submerged in this or review our podcast? (laughs) Awesome, yeah, do that. Why not? Um, And in the meantime, go out and watch Shimmer Lake and then come back next week and we'll talk to you about it. Cheers. Thanks. Bye.